Well, this little series is almost done, so check it out. I'm going to put this thing back together. I'm going to see what I can do about this speaker. First, I'm going to kind of vacuum the dust off of everything and see if I can't get a little bit of whatever might be in that gap binding it up out of there. Because when I move this, you can't hear it, but I hear a little roughness. So there's some dirt and stuff in there. So I'm going to see if I can't clean that out a little bit. You know what? I think that made a difference. I saw some very fine debris right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Yikes. Some of it just fell away. Some very fine debris that, that came out of that speaker when I did that. Now, I've never done that before, so I don't know if that's a good thing, bad thing, or whatever. But uh, I don't hear the scratchiness that I was hearing now. Right here is a little piece of that debris that came out. Can you see that when I move that around? That's a little piece of that debris. Now, I think that maybe is what was causing the, the problem, and I'm hoping that uh, I may have averted a bigger issue. Let's just see. Let me vacuum all that debris out. I think that helped. I think that made a difference. You always see these little dust caps that are on these that are made they're made of felt. What if I take a piece of felt? I don't know if I if I gently glue it to that speaker. Would that help that? I don't know if I'll make the matter the problem worse. I think what I'm gonna find I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this be. I did get it cleaned out. It didn't originally have one. But I am for future, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't buy dust caps and then how do I attach them to speakers because I don't know. And the last thing I want to do is make this speaker worse or ruin it. So I've I've made it better. It doesn't scratch as much, and I'm just going to leave it at that. I will go ahead and set this thing up and get ready to, uh, to do an alignment on this radio. Before I can align this radio, and I should have thought about this earlier, I need to go ahead and install the dial again, because uh, I'm going to need that as I'm doing the alignment. You know, for a little while I was working on a towel, and I think I'm going to get into that habit because these things like to bounce on this wood table and they go flying. There, that looks really nice. That's a beautiful dial. Simple, elegant, it's just nice. Now, I mentioned that I want to touch this up with a little bit of anti C's. Before I do that, before I do that, I want to really, really carefully touch it with a wire brush to clean it up. Or actually, a little bit of fine salt and sandpaper will do a better job. Some emery cloth. 
just to clean this up. You see it getting shiny there. That's what happens when you have different metals in contact with each other. They they cause corrosion on each other. Usually one of the metals will get more of the corrosion than the other. And it has to do with the ion exchange that happens with dissimilar metals. But in any event, you want to you want to remove that corrosion before you put it back together. And a lot of times a really light layer of grease or oil or something will prevent that and so I'll put a light layer of sewing machine as an anti-seize lubricant sewing machine grease really uh, any lubricant will work in the car world I used to use I used to buy Loctite anti-seize that silver stuff it had I think aluminum in it and I never put together anything especially things that got hot I never put together really much of anything without using it. It, it never failed me. All right, let me do that. This is not so much to lubricate as to create that little film so that it doesn't seize up again. So we're not talking about a bunch here. We're talking about the tiniest amount, even smaller than you use on all the other stuff I've been preaching about. Okay, perfect. Just what I need. Okay, the uh, this is dials in place, needles in place. Everything's good to go. Speakers hooked up. One foot antenna is hooked up. Um, I think we're ready to try this out. Since I've been messing with it, I'm going to put it on the Variac first so I can monitor current, and then I'll take it off and put it on the isolation transformer. All right, here we go. 60 volts, 80 volts, 90 volts, 100 volts. Okay, I'm at 120 volts. Okay, I'm going to hook the long wire antenna up. So I'm going to go ahead and, current looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the isolation transformer and take this noisy variac out. Turn off my noisy lights. Assuming you're correct, and I believe you are. They are not terrible. Yet. And the intelligence gathered by the raid on Yemen. Okay, the, the audio in that camera stinks, but I can tell you that it sounds really much better. Okay, I'm going to use the audio from my phone right now to show you how this is working. That, uh, that if there was any actionable intelligence related to the security of, uh, of uh, the people of the United States that obviously our intelligence agencies work very closely on that. But this is just a horrific incident. Uh, and, you know, some of the All that buzziness is gone out of the speaker. The game and uh, some of the... It's about touching people. We're talking about creating an atmosphere of harmony. We're talking about being... I love you so. Okay. Well, that's supposed to be 1370, so it's not that far off. Right now it's sitting at about, oh, about 1440. So it's a little bit off, but it's not terrible. Secular world, there can yeah. only be opinions about morality. There's, that's supposed to be 1430, and that's sitting just under 1500, so, yeah, it's a little off, not terrible. All right, let's, uh, let's show you what this thing will do um, from my camera, because I have much better sound with my camera. Let's, uh, let's go down, let's turn it down here and go down to the...
Well, the dial spring, for some reason, came out of its little hole here. And uh, nothing else went wrong. It just popped out of the hole. And so I made sure it's going to stay in the hole now. And uh, I just put it back, that's all. And I'm not sure what made it come out of the hole, to be honest with you. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because I took care of it. Okay, got the radio back on after the re fixing the dial string situation. Help her find a new boyfriend. I know, Greg. There we go. Show you back there when you watch that dial come around. You see that? There's that set screw. You see that set screw? That's that set screw is what distorted that collar, that brass collar that you see passing through there, that that dial pointer slips into. So that was a big part of my problem when I was trying to take it apart. I didn't realize those both had to be loosened, not just one, but both of them. Okay, let's do some tuning. Millions of dollars on real estate. Okay, this is this is 570 KNRS in Salt Lake, so that's a little bit off, but I can live with that off. Let's see what it's like on the other side. Okay, that's supposed to be 1370. Let me try this. Okay, I, I moved the dial pointer to right about 1370. Let's see what it looks like down there at 570 now. That's actually pretty good. So Rush Limbaugh is on 570. Let's see where 1430 is. Okay, 1370 looks pretty good. There's 1430. Okay. Okay, the first step is to connect the signal generator to the 6A7 grid, which is this tube right here. The grid, of course, comes right off the tuning condenser. All right. The IF frequency on this radio is not 455. This radio is 262 kilocycles, which is where my signal generator is set right now. And uh, I have... It says to do this with the tone control set all the way to the, to the high side and the volume control turned all the way up. And of course then you adjust the signal down as low as you can. As low as, as, low as it's practical to still be able to do the, the job. And the next step, it says to go ahead and adjust the trimmers on T1 and T2, which are the two IF cans, and uh, T1 is the first IF and T2 is the second IF. And uh, since you always do the second IF first, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now here's the output meter. Right now it's reading 316 millivolts. Let's see if I can adjust this IF can and make it a little better. It seems to have uh, maximized at about 0.87 volts, which is uh, it's pretty well expected. By the way, this radio, the uh, instructions say output reading to indicate 0.5 watts output is 1.3 volts. So there you go. Okay, now let's do let's do the first IF. <coughs> Okay. 
Okay, that's about as good as it gets. Now let me, uh, I always like to check in between steps of the alignment. And so let's see what it sounds like. I know it sounds terrible because this camera has terrible audio. But let's give it a shot, okay? I probably should have had this antenna disconnected, but it's not going to make a big difference. ...of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. Sounding really good. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Danielle Mann, and this is about your life. As you All right, guys, here's my strategy on this kind of thing. This is an old radio, and... Uh, it's it's picking up very well it's working very well and I don't see it I mean the the, the tuning is landing right where it's supposed to be on the dial um, there's no oscillations happening there's no squeal or bad hums or anything like that I personally think the best thing for me to do is leave this be now I've, the IFs are, are peaked out just fine Everything looks real good. I don't see any point in messing with this any further. And there's there's always a risk of messing it up more. You start messing with the oscillator and stuff. If it's already working well and you start tinkering with it, will you stand a chance of introducing some squeal or other other um, uh, other results from you know oscillations and things like that? So it's sitting right where it's supposed to be when it's at full power uh, according to the the uh, alignment instructions. So. I'm going to leave this be. I think this we can call this chassis restored. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the cabinet. This looks like it was cut this way on purpose. We might get this chassis set aside for the moment. I always get a little nervous when I work around a completed cabinet because if something gets messed up, I can't fix it. I have to take it to the guy that did the work. This is a nice radio. I... I like this radio. I've enjoyed working on it. Okay, these look real nice. I don't like to shine these up. They look horrible when they're shiny, by the way. Leave the patina on them because they don't look good at all when they're shined. I need to get a towel down so I don't scratch this cabinet. Now, often when these are redone, there will be lacquer in these holes. And you just have to be careful about when you put the screw in because what you don't want is to crack the lacquer around the screw and have it be visible once the screw is in place. So you just take it and you turn it slowly and you kind of thread it in. And it will thread in. And that will kind of wear that lacquer out of that hole. And if there's a shoulder on it, you get it to the shouldered part and by then you've worn it enough so that you can kind of press it home, see? That way you don't leave any marks on there. Now this lacquer has had a lot of time to cure because this thing has been done for about four months. That's how far behind I got. Wifey got sick, man, and you know, I just can't uh, can't be doing radios as much. And I already had everything scheduled, so I got way behind. That's why I, I'm so pressed to get other people's things done right now, and I can't touch any of mine. Once I get caught up, well then, hell, I can build my Ellicott's, and I can work on my ST70 and stuff like that, but for right now I'm sort of stuck. Alright, all four of these screws are in. I'll go ahead and lay it on its face now. It's a nice soft towel. And I'll take this cardboard and I'm going to lay the, the, uh, the cloth down before I put the cardboard down. Alright, so you, you just lay the cloth in there like so. I don't know that I want to glue it or try to pull it tight. Because I don't think, there, there were no signs of glue in this, so I don't think it was originally glued. So I'm going to see what I can do without glue. So this, this cardboard comes down in here, sits in here. So, so, if I staple that speaker cloth, even with an ordinary paper stapler, you know, the, with it opened up, staple it to this cloth, I can avoid using glue, which I do not want to use. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what those staples were, and I just couldn't remember. I'm going to try and staple this speaker cloth onto the cardboard here. I'm going to use your standard garden variety swing line stapler. 
want to stay where you can't really see the, you know, obviously you want to stay where the staples aren't going to be visible and you want to try and pull the speaker cloth a little bit tight but not overly so because you don't want it to get distorted now the staples are poking through but that's not a big deal and the cool thing about these is they are completely removable if I'm not happy with it this looks really brutal looks crude I'm sure you have to make sure that you can poke the screws through the through the cloth so you want to gently poke holes in it because you'll tear it if you just shove it down onto the cloth okay so let's get the speaker out usually the output transformer mounts to the top and the way the dust had settled on this it kind of seems like that's the case on this one so I'm going to go ahead and drop that on there I'm going to be really careful so you don't put a a mounting screw through the speaker very easy to do I know it sounds laughable but it is easy to do these studs will often want to turn when you're threading this that's okay you can just get them started and then you go on the other side and hold the studs with your finger while you're turning these now this output transformer at the top makes this a tight fit, but I'm pretty sure that's how it was. This is a nice little radio. He was missing at least a couple of these nuts, and uh, the speaker was real loose. Don't put your finger through the grill cloth while you're doing this. I just about did that just now. Okay, see the, these nuts here. I'm just tightening them down is all and I'm holding the stud from the front because otherwise they spin this one wants to spin anyway and last thing you want to do is put a screwdriver on the front of these things you just don't want to do that but only use your soft hands on them trust me you don't want to scratch the lacquer once it finally starts to tighten down it, it stops wanting to spin as you can see and the speaker is in place, the speaker board is in place, the nuts are in place, everything's good there. Um, the speaker cloth is mounted. Now I've got to mount this, this dial. I don't really like the way the dial mounts, but I've got to deal with it. It's got two pegs in the tenite that these clips mount to. So I'm going to have to uh, make that work. Now I don't know, maybe this clip doesn't come out and I can just slip it in. Let's just see. Nope, it just fell off. Okay. Great. So I've got to clean this dial. And then I'll come back ready to mount it. And I'll probably put a dollop of glue on each one of these pegs once I put it on there. But it won't be the kind of glue that really, really melts the tonite or anything. Because if I need to remove it, I want to be able to pop it off. So it'll just be glue that pops off. Okay. I have this dial clean ready to go in. Here are the tenite pegs that I have to be real careful of. There's one right there and there's one right here and the way they mount in the chassis as you see there's these little openings here in the, the, the circumference of the circle so you just take this you look for the side that you want to face up the most because it's symmetrical and then you place that on there. There's no ring or anything that I can see. All right, tenite warps a little bit. So if it's warped, you might want to turn it so that the warp side faces down. That's just one of the characteristics of tenite. It's on a lot of silver tones. Yeah. And that's as good as I'm going to get it. It's the same either way. Okay, you don't want to lay it down in this glass now because this glass is convex and it sticks out beyond any other surface so if I lay it down on it I'll be pushing on the glass so it's that from this point on I can't lay this down on its face what I can do is use my hand to support it though mm, those clips need to be tightened up a bit so the way you tighten up clips like this and you have to be real gentle about it so you don't break them okay let me see if I can show you you just take this part, this little tang that sticks up, and you flatten it down. Don't go nuts. You don't want to break it off of there because then the clip's no good. 
and this this radio this is the only way this thing is going to be held on is with this clip now like I said I am going to put some glue on there because these clips aren't tight enough and it works loose and then the dial becomes loose and and these radios that was a problem the dials were always a little loose airlines silver tones a um, whole bunch of other radios used a lot of tenite and they on, on these they did it with clips RCA used a lot of tenite too, but they and GE, but they used screws to hold them down usually. All right, so let's flatten the other one. This one's a little bent; it got damaged, it seems. Radio service cement, some of the best stuff, all-purpose glue I've ever used. It was made by General Cement. I don't know if it's still being made. Maybe it's not. I've never had it fail me in something I've needed to do with it. So I got glue on this and it'll mess with that lacquer. So I gotta be careful. Dog on it. Make these brushes so short you can't get the last bit of glue and pisses me off. Well, I hit the mute button on my camera by accident, and so I, I have a, a, quite a few minutes of no audio, but there's really not much to have said anyway. As you can see, I had a hell of a time getting the screws into this chassis and getting this chassis positioned, but it is getting there, and uh, before you know it, it'll be mounted in the cabinet all the way. All right, with these last bolts, I'm about done with installing this thing and about done with putting this together. So stay tuned because I'm going to upload the uh, final demo video here shortly and you'll be able to check them both out. Thanks guys. This is Michael from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City. That's all for now.